The David Pakman Show at davidpakman.com. Have you ever heard of the invisible gorilla study? This is where uh, subjects are uh, shown a video of two teams of kids. One team wears white, the other team wears black. They're passing two basketballs back and forth between players as they dodge and weave around each other. And before it starts, viewers are told you have to do one thing here. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the ball to each other. This isn't really that easy because people are moving all around. You really need to focus to do it. And about 30 seconds into the video, a man wearing a gorilla suit walks onto the screen right in the middle of the circle of kids, stops in the middle, looks straight ahead, beats his chest, and then casually strolls off the screen. When people afterwards are asked, did you see the gorilla? 50% of people never noticed that a guy in a gorilla suit walked out, beat his chest because they were too busy concentrating on what they thought really was the point of the study. Well, I f heard a fascinating piece on NPR, which talked about Trafton Drew, who's an attention researcher at Harvard Medical School, visiting these kind of cave-like, they're called reading rooms, where radiologists do their work. They look at MRIs, CAT scans, x-rays, and they're, they're looking for very specific things, illnesses, uh, just writing up reports based on different studies that are done. And Drew wanted to understand more about how do radiologists sometimes fail to see important things. And he decided to show uh, the, the, the way he put this together. Let's see, what's the best way to explain it? He said, I want you to look on this image, which I'm about to put up for you, for, um, for cancer. You're looking for cancer in the lungs. You're looking for cancerous nodules in the lungs. Let's put up the picture that was used in the study. Now, as you can see here, at quick glance, you might say, oh, that's interesting, it's lungs. What you may notice upon further inspection is that on the right side, and I'm saying this for people who aren't watching, there is a, an image of a gorilla superimposed onto this. Now, it is dark, and it is over the darker part of the, uh, uh, of, of the image, but a, a significant number, 83% of radiologists did not notice that the gorilla was there. So... This really is a study about what we're focused on, right? And what one radiologist said is, listen, the gorilla in this image is black. And as a radiologist, black things in lungs usually have no significance. Cancer is white. Pneumonia is white. Acute diseased, everything but collapsed lungs, it's white. So a collapsed lung isn't in this location, and it's not white. So really, it was missed, but at the same time, it's not the type of thing that has any clinical significance. What do you think of that explanation? What do you think of the study? I think, uh, I mean, uh, considering what people do focus on, I think it is a reasonable explanation for why right. they'd miss that. For why more than 8 out of 10 did not see that there was a gorilla in this thing. But at the same time, I mean, shouldn't you be scouring every pixel of this image? Uh, I mean, I I don't like the sound of that. I would much rather go to the to the... Uh, two guys who who saw it. I think Natan, an interesting way, the two out of ten who saw it. Right. An interesting additional way that this could have been tested is to actually show some people images that uh, to show images that do have some cancerous nodules and see if there's a correlation between the radiologists who miss the gorilla and those who miss the cancerous nodules. I mean, I think it's a pretty normal thing. It's being confirmed in a lot of studies that people's attention, when it's focused on one thing. When they're given instructions, they tend to just ignore everything else. There was a study done where people were in a driving simulator and they were told to pay very close attention to the other cars on the simulated road and uh, not run them over and not touch them at all. And at the end of it, they asked the people if they saw anything strange and then they, they ran it back and they saw that they had run over a bunch of motorcycles. Right. Because they weren't told that motorcycles were something they were supposed to focus on. Right. So this really brings up another issue, which is... When we, when we do most of these tests, in most cases, the radiologist already knows what diagnosis is looking to be confirmed or, or ruled out. And I wonder whether on the long term, it's more beneficial overall for the health of the patients to have radiologists go in with a completely open mind and just analyze what they see without any prejudice about specifically what condition is being looked for or not. And uh, I, I would be interested in seeing some studies on that, too. Yeah, it's very hard to train your brain to do that, uh, basically, when it comes to anything, right? right? I mean, no matter what you're looking at, there's usually usually some form of prejudice. Well, this gets us back to the checklist manifesto. I forget the, the name of the uh, author who wrote the checklist manifesto, but saying it doesn't matter how many times you've done it. If you have a checklist, if you say, when we are looking at lungs, 
this is the order and this is the process of what we go through that it's useful even for the most experienced radiologist. That would be a, some, something to look at also. Indeed.